everyone has had a collective breakdown when we saw that the new Wreck-It Ralph movie has all Disney princesses interacting with each other. Who wouldn't want to see a modern version of our faves? But stay tuned, because many fans seem to think that the movie actually totally ruined it for a couple of them. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to never miss another video, and be sure to check out our community section for even more fun. Now let's check out the differences between the original Disney princesses and the Wreck-It Ralph version. Rapunzel Let's start with the princess that's still pretty much the same. Well, except for one thing. Rapunzel still has her green eyes, a bright look, and a gorgeous pink dress. We're not sure why, but Wreck-It Ralph's version of Rapunzel still has long hair. We're pretty sure that hair doesn't grow that fast, and there's no way she'd be able to get it to the same length as before. Most importantly, why would she do that anyways? Rapunzel even asks Penelope if she has magic hair. You have magic hair? No. But didn't her magical hair lose all the power when it was cut? All she got left was her healing tears. But since that wasn't her main power of the movie, Wreck-It Ralph decided to throw all logic out of the window and pull out the Rapunzel that was still stuck in the tower. If you look at her eyes, you'll also notice that the Wreck-It Ralph's version isn't a vivid green as we might know her from the actual movie. Rapunzel's eyes used to be as green as Pascal's. But if you look at Pascal in the background on the right from Belle, you'll see that his shade of green definitely changed. Bell. So let's have a look at Belle, since she's standing right next to Rapunzel when the princess interrogated Vanellope on what makes her a princess. How meta! Anyways, the Wreck-It Ralph version of Belle might definitely feel different, but that's only because it's been more than 25 years since Beauty and the Beast first came out. The animators at the time were very limited with what they could do when it came to bringing Disney princesses to life, but Wreck-It Ralph did that for Belle. You can still see her signature hair very clearly, except now it's even more detailed. The only thing that stands out as majorly different are her ears and nose, but that's what happens when you enter the modern world of animation. Because of that, you'll notice that her eyes are a lot bigger in Wreck-It Ralph, and her eyebrows are way longer. The original Belle also had a wider gap between her nose and her lips. But again, these are just minor differences that are a result of modern animation. Either way, Belle looks awesome, and it's absolutely amazing to to see her again and interacting with her fellow princesses. Cinderella Speaking of old school animation, Cinderella looks almost unrecognizable, especially up close. If it wasn't for her signature items like her dress and her hair, she could be just about anyone. Although Wreck-It Ralph's version of Cinderella still features the choker necklace, the gorgeous blue dress, and the blue headpiece, Wreck-It Ralph's version is much tamer. We also see her wearing gigantic sparkly earrings that definitely look slightly different on the original Cinderella. But if you consider the fact that the original Cinderella movie came out in 1950, it still did an amazing job at creating something truly iconic. Seriously, what would we do without Cinderella? Although Wreck-It Ralph's version definitely puts an interesting spin on it, it's exactly what Cinderella should look like as a modern-day princess. But what's actually totally different on the modern Cinderella is her hair. Although it's clear that the original Cinderella's hair would be really hard to pull off, seeing her with straight bangs just feels weird. Not to mention you can totally see almost every individual piece of hair, which is pretty impressive. Compare that to the original Cinderella's hair and and you can definitely see the difference. Snow White We all know that Snow White is the OG, aka the first Disney princess featured on a full-length movie, which is pretty impressive. This also means that Snow White is pretty old, like 1937 old. But isn't it pretty impressive how Snow White's modern animated version managed to look exactly like her old self? Of course, this version of Snow White has much more vivid colors, but everything else looks pretty on point. The Wreck-It Ralph team even brought to life her iconic hair, which was absolutely beautifully recreated. And what's even more amazing about this Snow White is that Wreck-It Ralph decided to have her sing. The original voice of Snow White was Adriana Casalotti, who wasn't even credited for the movie. Rumors state that her voice was so unique, Disney locked her in a contract and she was never able to work on any other movie again. The Wreck-It Ralph's voice might not be Adriana, but it does pay her a fantastic tribute. After all, it's only fair to show Snow White's unique voice as much as possible. And hey, even though Adriana unfortunately passed away, Wreck-It Ralph broke Adriana's contract rules with Disney and featured a version of Adriana's beautiful voice. Aurora 
Okay, this is pretty interesting because there are a couple of different versions of Aurora out there. One is the franchise version, and the other is the original. The original, because it was released in 1959, was very simple graphics and isn't exactly detailed, but Aurora also reappeared in the franchise version. The original had a signature blue dress, and the franchise version had a pink dress. It looks like the Wreck-It Ralph's version decided to take on the franchise Aurora so naturally. She'll have the pink dress. But what's interesting about the modern version is also the fact that her hair is slightly different. Have you noticed? The front twirl is set in the opposite direction than the front twirl in both older versions. Other than that, Wreck-It Ralph did a pretty awesome job with representing Aurora. Did you notice she was actually sound asleep in the beginning set and didn't really appear much after? Well, we all know the real Aurora would have been wide awake unless this one's just taking a casual nap. To be honest, being a Disney princess must be hard work, so she definitely deserves a nap. Ariel Ariel briefly appears in the trailer, but it's enough to discuss some similarities and differences between this Ariel and the original. Much like other princesses we've mentioned so far, The Little Mermaid came out a while back, which means the animations still weren't as crisp and smooth. But it looks like Wreck-It Ralph definitely took it one step further. You can see Ariel in the beginning scene in the back, and there's one thing that stands out more than anything else. It's her red hair! It definitely looks way brighter than it is in the original movie, and of course, slightly longer too. But her actions are pretty bizarre. Since when does Ariel spend a lot of time on her hair? Hair. Why is she brushing it like she's Rapunzel? It definitely doesn't suit her. But then again, maybe there's something about Ariel we don't really know. But despite the differences, Wreck-It Ralph made sure that all the details are there. Can you see her shiny earrings? It's pretty amazing that they were able to capture that detail from so far away. Unfortunately, we don't get to see Ariel for longer, unless you count her long red hair next to Elsa's, who's demonstrating her powers. Show off. Jasmine. Now here's someone that definitely changed a lot. You can first see Jasmine floating on the magic carpet and later again when she gets ready to strike Penelope with the genie bottle. Seriously, these modern princesses are savage AF. Jasmine has been getting a lot of love from Wreck-It Ralph fans, and we have to admit that she does indeed look good. But she's also quite different. Of course, her clothes are the same. Who wouldn't recognize the iconic Jasmine clothes? No one can rock light blue the way Jasmine does. But have you noticed that her face definitely looks different? All Disney princesses seem to have gotten bigger eyes, but in Jasmine's face, her face also became rounder. The original Jasmine has a slightly more defined chin, but Wreck-It Ralph's version is as round as her face. Her nose also seems to stand out more, especially since we only got the very basic version of it in the original. You can actually see it stand out way more than expected when she gets into her pose, ready to strike Penelope. But the fans are right, she still looks absolutely gorgeous. And let's be honest, we'll always be jealous of her hair. Merida and now let's move on to one of the most controversial ones out of the 10 Disney princesses we're showing you today. Many have complained that Wreck-It Ralph made everyone's favorite feminist Disney princess way too similar to everyone else. After all, the beauty of Merida was that she stood out, from her hair right down to her mission in life. The Wreck-It Ralph changed her hair to a slightly more Ariel-esque color, gave her bigger eyes, thinner waist, and the very typical Disney princess look. But hey, she's still holding her crossbow and she was ready to fire it at Penelope. So you know she's still fierce. We also love the moment where she totally disapproved of Snow White's random singing. Just look at that shade. Our girl was totally over it. People are also laughing at the fact that she looks totally annoyed at the entire thing, which is nothing like the always positive Merida we know. Look at her. She was ready to leave the whole thing and be over with it while the other princesses were still enjoying their moment. We feel you, Merida. We really do. Mulan. One of the best moments from the trailer comes from the moment Vanellope appears in the Disney princess room. You can catch it for a split second, but Mulan actually lunges herself in the air with a high kick. We're telling you, these princesses are serious when it comes to protecting themselves. Many people seem to have missed Mulan in the trailer, but she's definitely there. You can also see her again with other Disney princesses, and she looks absolutely gorgeous. Her appearance was definitely praised by those who did notice her, although we have to be honest, the actual Mulan probably wouldn't be that quiet. We really hope Wreck-It Ralph will give her some justice with a few lines in the movie. Mulan does look like the happiest of them all to be there, and she's definitely enjoying the moment. In 
our ideal world, her and Pocahontas would have a battle so we can finally see who's actually the strongest out of them too. Judging by that high kick, this would be an easy win for Mulan. It's also been argued that Mulan shouldn't be in the movie anyways, since she isn't an official Disney princess, but she's definitely a princess in our books. Pocahontas Say what? A 3D Pocahontas? It's all we ever wanted. It's totally weird seeing a modern version of one of our favorite Disney princesses. She looks totally awesome and absolutely fearless. But why is Cinderella doing Pocahontas's hair? <laughs> and why is Pocahontas enjoying it like she's in some kind of spa? You'd think Wreck-It Ralph would give her some kind of characteristics, but nope, she looks pretty regular. Even when she's ready to swipe Penelope off the face of the earth. People have had mixed reactions about Pocahontas Pocahontas because Wreck-It Ralph also seemed to have changed her complexion. She practically looks like every other Disney princess next to her, though her complexion in the movie definitely has a much darker tone. And again, they made her eyes look ginormous. But hey, at least her hair still flows for no reason at all. Did you notice? It's blowing in the wind even though there's no wind at all. And she still looks like she could kick some serious butt. What do you think of Pocahontas' new look? Do you think Wreck-It Ralph had a good reason for making her skin lighter? But we did love seeing her interact with other princesses. Disney princesses are still popular among audiences of all ages, and yet they also have endured their share of criticism. Their united appearance in Ralph Breaks the Internet prepares audiences for an unforgettable comeback. Watch until number one to see why we can expect to finally see feminist princesses. If this is your first time visiting The Things, don't forget to subscribe and please give this video a big thumbs up. Here's hidden messages from Disney's princesses in Wreck-It Ralph 2 makes fun of Disney Princess model. What does it mean to be a Disney princess? This is definitely a question raised by Ralph Breaks the Internet trailer when Disney princesses question whether or not Vanellope qualifies as one of them. A BBC 2012 article questions the lessons young girls can learn from Disney princesses, revealing an important hidden message. Overall, Disney royalty can teach us a lot about perseverance and determination, as each one had to overcome a difficult set of obstacles. Earlier princesses such as Cinderella, Aurora, and Snow White have been especially criticized for being too delicately depicted. The article also brings up a great line that really emphasizes how tropes and models for Disney princesses have been forced upon Disney princesses. The saying is that Cinderella never asked for a prince, she asked for a day off and a dress. It seems that no matter what princesses want, whether it be a chance to live on land, save a parent, or wake up from a cruise, the early Disney model required this all to be accomplished according to a problematic and demeaning set of standards. Rapunzel's self-awareness in pointing out this model and its ridiculousness promises that Ralph Breaks the Internet will continue in the footsteps of Frozen, Moana, and Brave in showing us an alternative model. Internet Antidotes one comment that Rapunzel makes when she's confronted with Vanellope is asking if she's ever been poisoned. The implication of this question is that a princess might be defined by the fact that she has overcome poisoning, though this fact is pointed out as part of a list that shows that Disney is willing to laugh at itself for its past blunders when it comes to representation of women. It also causes us to think about how far we've come. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs came out in 1937. At the time, seeing a woman kiss 12 men as they left for work was cute and charming, having her downfall be the manipulation at the hands of a stranger who caused her to eat a poisoned apple was horrific, but in an entertaining way. Now these concepts would provoke so much criticism that would hinder a movie's success. The hidden message is that the internet informs us about problems faced by people whose voices have not always been heard. Having the princesses as part of an internet platform actually points out that the internet itself has contributed to how we have become more aware of harmful treatment of women and has now resulted in a lower tolerance to making fun of others' oppression. All good things. Passive to active. As soon as Vanellope appears in a room filled with Disney princesses, their response is hilarious as it shows the princesses in an uncharacteristically defensive light. Instead of being victims of their circumstances and fulfilling the role of damsels in distress, they brandish weapons to defend themselves against the potential threat. We might expect that a room full of Disney princesses would adopt a much more passive attitude in light of danger and would call for help. This is not the case in the scene from the Ralph Breaks the Internet trailer. Jasmine uses her magic lamp as a weapon. 
Pocahontas has her wooden staff ready, and Cinderella smashes her glass slipper to use it as a sharp tool to protect herself. The princesses from the past have always waited for some kind of action or event to happen, but in the trailer we see these same princesses preparing to defend themselves and each other. This is definitely refreshing to see that princesses are no longer relying on men for their rescue, but are following new princesses like Elsa and Anna, Moana and Merida for demonstrating strength without needing a man's validation. What was your reaction to these self-sufficient princesses and their reaction to a younger and less conventional princess? A man to save the day. Ralph Breaks the Internet is getting a lot of attention because of the movie's obvious self-awareness and willingness to poke fun at itself. It's easy to criticize the movie's choices, and it's even easier to criticize Disney because of its questionable decisions. It seems that the Wreck-It Ralph sequel has thought ahead and is instead using this crossover opportunity as a way to anticipate these critical remarks. While Vanellope is horrified by the classification system that the Disney princesses use, she ultimately finds common ground. The princesses ask Vanellope a series of worrisome questions to which she becomes concerned, even asking if she needs to call the police. Vanellope is showing the audience that Disney is aware that women should never have to endure the terrible treatment that they have suffered. It also suggests that putting up with this treatment is not an ideal princess-like way to behave. In the end, the princesses accept Vanellope as one of their own, when she admits that she has also experienced that people assume that a man is needed to save the day. This alludes to the first movie, and Vanellope Penelope's reluctance when she first meets Ralph. However, it also proves that Disney continues to follow stereotypical tropes for women in movies, but now they are aware and ready to poke fun at themselves. Most of the original voice actors are back. The Disney princess scene is definitely also used as a way to draw in an older audience, as it creates a sense of nostalgia. Not only is this a first for all the Disney princesses to appear on screen together, but they are also all performed by the original voice actors. The familiarity of the voices definitely adds to a real effect to the fact that the princesses we grew up with are all in the same room together. As awesome and exciting as this may be, it causes us to have to point out a darker truth behind Disney's classic princess voice, Snow White. Snow White's voice in 1937 when the movie came out is unofficially credited to actress Adriana Casalotti. Rumor is that Disney owned the rights to Casalotti's unforgettable voice and prevented her from pursuing a career after Snow White. It has been said that Disney claimed he wanted to keep Snow White's identity a mystery so that the fictional character would always remain as she is. It's terrible to think that Casalotti never achieved the type of recognition her talent deserved. Since 2011, actress Katie Von Till has been the only voice responsible to Snow White. Nothing better to do. Can we just take a second to ask about where exactly Vanellope finds these princesses? It seems that they are in some kind of dressing room, and when they first appear on screen, they don't seem to be occupied by anything. The princesses embody their demure selves as they sit around in full ball gowns. It seems this is the room they hang out in between their group performances, which is where we see them for the first time in the trailer. Bella's reading and Rapunzel is writing. Other than that, it's unclear what the other princesses are busy doing to pass the time. Jasmine though sitting on a magic carpet is simply looking at a flower, much like Tiana who is just looking out the window, and Snow White who is calling a bird to her outstretched fingers. Doesn't it seem strange that these princesses, supposedly known for their role in their kingdoms, are spending their downtime grooming one another and in deep contemplation? This might be another way for Disney to show that it hasn't represented femininity in all of its aspects in past movies, but it still feels like a missed opportunity. These princesses could have been showing off the diversity of their strengths and talents. Is Vanellope a Disney princess? Vanellope's first reaction to arriving at her destination is disgust as she says, princesses and cartoon characters, barf. Vanellope takes ownership of her status as a princess, and this brings up a great hidden message about Vanellope's contribution to the Disney princess legacy. When Ralph first meets Vanellope in Wreck-It Ralph, she's a princess in Sugar Rush, vying for a spot on the racing leaderboard. The only problem is, is that she doesn't fit in because she's a glitch, and this subjects her to ridicule. Ultimately, Vanellope learns to embrace what makes her different and unique, and refuses to give it up. 
This really does embody a Disney princess's spirit as she's determined, resilient, and compassionate. She also has faults that she embraces, as what makes her her. There are some significant differences though. Vanellope is not looking for any type of romantic love, nor is she ready to do so as she's much younger than the typical Disney princess. What's more, she rejects the stylistic tropes that princesses like Cinderella aspire to. She opts for a green hoodie over a pink hooped skirted dress. Overall, Vanellope is a welcome addition to the princess lineup, especially since she's a catalyst for causing the traditional princesses to question their problematic history. Disney owns everything. Aside from owning up to its sexist past and tendency for gender stereotyping, Ralph Breaks the Internet uses its trailer to demonstrate its wide cultural reach. Disney doesn't have the same usual copyright constraints that other movies have to deal with, and they're willing to use that completely to their advantage. There's no limit to the movie references Disney can make since they have bought and acquired such a wide array of production companies and studios. In one frame from the trailer, the viewers are confronted just how much Disney has to flaunt, as we can clearly see Mickey, the Millennium Falcon, a TIE Fighter, the Death Star, Betamax, Iron Man, Kermit the Frog, Dumbo, R2-D2, the house from Up, and more. These are just visible from one shot in the movie trailer, which only alludes to the marketing potential in a crossover movie like Ralph Breaks the Internet. Disney itself is relying on its capacity to band fans of multiple genres and generations together to accomplish the exact same goal of breaking the internet. After all, the movie's Pixar quality is not meant to stand in its way of reaching Disney-level successes at the box office, and it seems like there are no lengths Disney won't go to to reach these heights. Merida Cover-Up Disney's acquiring of Pixar has not been a seamless one, especially when it comes to the criticism surrounding Disney's appropriation of Brave. Merida was hailed as a female protagonist that did not have time to worry about romantic love, embraced her much more realistic figure, and was not confined by gender stereotypes. When Disney then proceeded to alter her waist measurements in preparation for her entrance in the Disney Princess lineup, they received a lot of criticism for their choices, including Merida in the Disney Princess scene and Ralph Breaks the Internet definitely demonstrates that Disney is embracing this heroine as one of their own, but they don't seem ready to put in center stage just yet. She's not seen in the first shot of the princesses in their dressing room and remains very much in the background in other scenes. Maybe this is Disney's way of trying to keep the spotlight off her, which will help keep them free of unwanted negative feedback about how they've represented her character. Twitter users were especially enraged by Mulan's missing appearance in the movie as well as Ariel's. It has been confirmed, however, that all three princesses will stand along their cohort in the movie. Feminine Undertones not only is Disney trying to take accountability for its sexist stereotyping in the past, it seems to also be promoting a feminist message. While Ariel literally gave up her voice for her chance at love and human legs, Aurora couldn't provide consent to true love while in a deep sleep. These messages continue to be reasons for audiences to question the message and precedent Disney princesses have set for their impressionable audiences. The much-anticipated and highly popular scene of Disney princesses together on screen for the first time is also monumental for the decision to demonstrate self-awareness at how troubling some of these storylines are, especially in a contemporary context. Vanellope is the young heroine who points this out while bonding over the assumption that men are required to save the day. This potential for female bonding sets up a feminist undertone for the movie that parallels the strength of Marvel Avengers superheroes to the wisdom, strength, and resilience of Disney princesses. Who knows what stories could be possible when the two are finally put on equal footing. It also suggests that Ralph Breaks the Internet will be a departure from an outdated, misogynistic character model. Anyone can see that Merida of Dunbrock sticks out like a sore thumb when standing next to the other Disney princesses. Wreck-It Ralph 2 is scheduled to hit the big screen in late 2018, and judging from this trailer, it looks like the princesses have it out for the first Pixar princess. Stick around to find out why Merida is breaking all of the rules. Don't forget to subscribe to The Things if you love staying up to date with the latest Disney news. Give us a big thumbs up, and more awesome videos will come your way. Now, let's find out why Princess Merida is is getting roasted left, right, and center.
Just six years before the movie Brave came out in theaters, Walt Disney Studios decided to join forces with Pixar. The House of Mouse bought Pixar and has been working alongside it ever since. Merida became an official Disney princess back in 2013, however, she isn't like the rest of the women in the group. Did you catch the latest Wreck-It Ralph 2 trailer? If so, you probably noticed how the Disney princesses were throwing some shade Merida's way. While she might not have done anything to warrant this, her differences make her easy to pick on. As soon as the brave star begins to speak, the princesses around her stare at her in disbelief. Vanellope Von Schweetz's jaw practically hits the floor, and Princess Anna whispers, She's from the other studio. Ah while looking apologetic. While Merida might not get the joke, it's quite obvious that she's having some issues with communicating. Her incredibly thick accent makes it impossible to understand her. If that's not pure mess, I don't know what is. Which is why many of us hope that she'll have some subtitles in the movie. Did any of you understand what she said the first time around? If so, let us know what you think you heard in the comments and we'll reveal what she really said at the end of this video. Despite the fact that Merida is a much-loved Disney princess, she's also the first Disney Pixar princess to join the group. This makes her different than the other girls in the dressing room. Top that off with her brute ways, and it's easy to see that the Disney princesses just don't know what to do with her. On top of all this, the Disney princesses might be a little jealous of her background. After all, hers is the opposite of what they had to go through. By now, we've seen the same tired plot over and over again. Girl feels lost, girl meets boy, boy saves girl, and they live happily ever after. If you're anything like us, you're a little sick and tired of these types of storylines. For centuries, this is the plot production Disney has been made to follow. However, after 2012's Brave came out, the Enchanted Era ended with Pixar in its back pocket. At only 15 years old, Merida was being talked into marrying her betrothed. However, the last thing she wanted to do was get married. Nope, our girl Merida wanted to be as free as a bird. The fact that Merida is the first Disney princess who doesn't have a husband is a major deal. It's obvious that Disney is trying to shake up the norm by giving us something other than a love story to watch. This may be a little frustrating for the other Disney princesses as they were made to marry from very early on. Look at Snow White. She got married at 14 years old. No wonder she's bitter. For the time being, it looks like Merida might stay single for the rest of her life. And there's nothing wrong with that. On another note, Merida also has something that the other princesses crave, a huge family. Have you ever wondered why Disney princesses tend to be raised by single fathers or evil stepmothers? Well, we have to, so allow us to clear this up for you. Out of the 11 Disney princesses on record, only three of them have mothers of their own. Mulan, Tiana, and Merida have managed to be raised by women, which might have given them the strength they needed to follow their hearts. The real reason for this reoccurring theme, however, has everything to do with Walt Disney and nothing to do with his princesses. You see, Walt Disney was traumatized by his own mother's passing, which prompted him to pass his pain onto his characters. Obviously, things needed to change, which is why many of the new princesses are starting to have both their parents present. The fact that Merida had both her mother, her father, and a bunch of siblings is quite astonishing, though. Actually, it's a first. As a result of this, some Disney princesses might feel the need to roast their Scottish member. After all, she doesn't know what growing up alone feels like. Don't think this is a good enough reason to roast someone? Wait until you hear the last one on this list. When you think about Disney movies, you think about singing and dancing, right? Well, we hope you didn't get your hopes up when watching Brave, because singing and dancing don't exist in this movie. It is common knowledge that every single Disney princess has the voice of an angel. However, Merida never let her pipes shine bright like a diamond. This leads us to believe that she's either a terrible singer or she just doesn't like spending her time bursting into song. We're under the impression that the Disney princesses like to roast Merida for her awful voice. In the end, these ladies probably enjoy sharing a song or two behind the scenes, and she probably gets left out 100% of the time. So why is it that Merida refrains from singing a single note for the entirety of Brave? The reason behind this is quite simple. The girl doesn't want to sing. Disney has been changing the rules for quite some time now, but having a songless movie is quite absurd. Were you disappointed when you found out that singing and dancing had no place in Brave? If so, just know that you are not the only one. So, the moment we've all been waiting for is here. We're finally going to find out what Merida said in the Wreck-It Ralph 2 trailer. The Disney Pixar princess says the following, I gave me mummy a cake. She turned into a big bear. My old yen tried to do her 
again. And if that's not a pure mess, I don't know what is. After seeing the look on Vanellope's face, Moana tells her that they can't understand her either. And Anna chimes in that she's from another studio. This Disney Pixar joke is definitely hilarious. Meredith's thick Scottish accent is impossible to decipher, which will make her a hilarious character in Wreck-It Ralph 2. And who knows, maybe we'll hear her singing for the first time and get blown away. With so many Disney princesses to choose from, picking a favorite can seem impossible. If you had to choose one though, which one would it be? Let us know who your favorite princess is in the comments. And be sure to tell us what makes her so special to you. She is a princess! <laughs> It's easy to get caught up in the hype of seeing our favorite Disney princesses interacting with each other in Wreck-It Ralph 2. However, we've noticed a few disturbing things about our beloved Merida that fans are less than happy about. We'll take you inside the controversy and let you choose which side you're on in the debate. Don't forget to subscribe to The Things if you love Disney, and hit that notification bell to never miss another video. Now let's check out what's going on with Merida. Let's get this out of the way. We love Disney movies. There's so much to like about them, and it seems like they're getting better all the time. Disney has been around for so long that it's not surprising they have some regrettable things in their history, especially where women are involved. For a long time, the company drew criticisms because they constantly portrayed their heroines as hapless and showed some pretty disturbing relationship dynamics, you know, like Belle's Stockholm Syndrome, or that it's okay to kiss unconscious women on the off chance they've been poisoned by a witch? With the passage of time and the raising of voices, it finally seemed that Disney was getting the message. We wanted heroines that were ready, willing, and able to save themselves instead of relying on a man to save them. And going even further than that, what about a woman who doesn't have or even want a man in her life? In Disney movies, it seems like all women who fit that description are always evil, as if having a relationship makes you a better person. And then we heard about the movie Brave, directed by Mark Andrews and Brenda Chapman. Chapman drew inspiration from her relationship with her own daughter and became the first female to direct a feature-length film for Pixar. Things seemed to be looking good, and the movie itself was far from disappointing. The first thing we noticed about Merida was her appearance, and we were thrilled that she looked so different than many other heroines. She has fiery, thick, and unruly hair instead of the perfectly poised locks of other princesses. She also looks like the teenage girl that she's supposed to be, and is a much more realistic-looking princess than we're used to seeing. Instead of focusing on finding a man, Merida is already betrothed to one, and she isn't happy about it. We see her fighting her own battles, wielding powerful weapons, and basically being the princess we all wanted to see when we were all little girls. It seemed like Disney was finally getting the message, but then things went south. Fans hoping to visit the official Brave website were in for an unpleasant surprise when they encountered a completely made-over Merida. Disney took a character that we adored because of how strong and, well, brave she was, and made her look like a totally generic princess. This new look was supposed to come across as glamorous, but that's not an adjective we would ever use to describe Merida. It seemed like Disney had taken two steps forward and one step back with their handling of Merida. The new version looked thinner, older, and much less like her normal self. People were deeply unhappy with the change and were sure to let Disney know. They even started a petition on change.org, which gathered over 200,000 signatures. Even Brenda Chapman was furious about the change, and we don't blame her one bit. She even went as far as calling it atrocious. According to her, Merida was created to break the mold and give young girls a good role model. Thankfully, it seemed like Disney finally got the message again and removed the glamorized version of Merida from the website. Disney released a statement claiming that the design was intended to be a one-off and had served its purpose and would now be removed. But of course, as we all know, the story doesn't end there. One of the most exciting things about the new Wreck-It Ralph is the fact that we're gonna get to see the princesses on the big screen. Princesses and cartoon characters! The good news is that Merida is included with the rest of the cast, as she should be, of course. But the bad news is that she doesn't look anything like the original version. You may be willing to chalk this up to the difference in animation styles between Brave and Wreck-It Ralph 2, but that just doesn't completely explain it. Let's take a look at Belle. 
Beauty and the Beast came out decades ago, and yet she is completely recognizable after her makeover. Same with Cinderella, Aurora, and Snow White. And their films came out way before Brave did. At this point, it's pretty obvious that the cosmetic differences between the Merida we met in Brave and the version we see in Wreck-It Ralph are intentional rather than accidental. It looks as if Disney decided to go with the glamorized version of Merida that they created, instead of the original version of Merida that was such a success with fans. This just leaves us wondering why. Who is this for? Merida was an important character who arguably paved the way for stronger Disney princesses. Frozen is frequently praised because Elsa and Anna didn't rely on men to save them. However, both heroines look much more like typical Disney princesses than Merida does, and you'll notice they look pretty much the same in Wreck-It Ralph 2. And when we watched the trailer for the movie, at first it seemed like Disney was getting it. Many of the other princesses seemed to be making fun of typical Disney tropes. When trying to determine whether or not Vanellope is a princess, the girls even ask her if people always assume that a man is going to save her. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? It seems like Disney was trying to laugh at itself and show that female characters can be strong. But if they truly believe that, then why did they use a glamorized Merida instead of the original? Think about it. It can't be to impress Vanellope who wears a hoodie and looks very young. Recognizing the problem is one thing. But to impress us, Disney actually needs to address it. Many fans are upset that we're getting a dolled up version of Merida and consider it to be an insult towards an awesome character. However, others think feeling outraged over Merida's appearance is making a big deal about nothing. There's definitely no denying that Merida looks different than we're used to seeing her. But is that a good thing, a bad thing, or not really a thing at all? Wreck-It Ralph 2 managed to break the internet before the movie even came out, but there are far more details in the trailer people actually overlooked. Have you paid enough attention to Moana to see this mind-boggling detail? Don't forget to hit that notification bell to never miss another video. Now let's check out some details about Moana from Wreck-It Ralph 2. Hanging out with Elsa and Anna. Okay, we get that Moana, Elsa, and Anna are all modern princesses, so it would only be fair they stay together. Have you spotted them? When Vanellope first appeared, they were chilling in the back together. Moana was casually resting on her boat paddle, and by the looks of it, they're having a pretty awesome conversation. We really want to know what they're talking about. You can also see her be chill with Merida and the excited Rapunzel next to her. This version of Moana is wearing the heart of Tefiti on her neck, which is pretty awesome, but we also love that she's dressed in her typical clothing from the movie. But seriously, what are these Disney princesses actually talking about? They look like they've known each other for years and they're immediately able to become each other's BFFs. Chilling with Rapunzel but that's not the end of Moana. We see her again in one of the more recent stills that managed to break the entire internet again. Twitter went wild after Disney released the image of the Disney princess slumber party. We're still not over the fact that we'll get to see Disney princesses casually hanging out and talk to each other all in the same room. Seriously, we're not over it. But have you noticed Moana? She's just so chill about the whole thing. She seems totally smitten with Vanellope and we can't blame her considering how cute she is. We can't see what she's wearing in full, but from what it looks like, she has an orange top on. Considering other princesses have some sort of loungewear, we can imagine Moana will most likely be wearing either pants or shorts. Seems strange to see her in regular clothing, but it seems even stranger that we haven't seen her in a while and we saw all the other Disney princesses. You can even see that Rapunzel looks like she's totally laying on Moana. Was this done because they couldn't figure out what kind of clothes they want to give to everyone's favorite island princess? We've discussed the awesome casual clothing Disney Disney princesses wear in one of our previous videos, and Moana definitely wasn't shown enough to come to any conclusions. We'll have to wait until the movie comes out to see. But have you noticed the detail that left Twitter totally shook? This entire Wreck-It Ralph 2 has already been a wild ride, and the movie hasn't even dropped yet. But this one detail really proves a Disney theory fans had for years. Baby Moana have you noticed it? There are several tweets out there that managed to get viral thanks to the very first Wreck-It Ralph 2 trailer, and they're all equally as confused with this scene that so many people managed to overlook. This tiny little detail just proves that there's way more to unpack from the trailer than just the scenes with the Disney princesses. Of course, it's totally understandable that people were so excited about seeing all of our favorite Disney heroines in the same room, but we totally forgot to focus on other parts of the trailer. The moment is already becoming a huge 
huge meme, and many have turned their tablet screen into their own version of what the baby is actually looking at. But that's not what you should be paying attention to. Did you notice the baby actually looks similar to baby Moana from the actual movie? Just look at her features. The skin tone, the nose, the big brown eyes, the short hair. It's totally her. Even the eyebrows totally match to the cartoon's character we saw running toward the ocean and trying to grab the heart of Te Fiti before it got washed away. We have no idea what the baby Moana will actually be doing in the Wreck-It Ralph 2 movie, or if this in fact is a baby Moana. But you can't deny that the similarities are too good to be ignored. If anything, this proves a very important Disney theory that has been explored plenty of times before. If you watch our Disney videos, you'll know that we covered the topic that all Disney movies are somehow connected with each other. Disney even admitted they've connected the movies themselves. From a Luxo ball to several other small objects you can find in almost every Disney movie ever made, they really do know how to keep their fans engaged with the movies. So could this be yet another Easter egg Disney decided to throw in one of their movies? Wreck-It Ralph 2 is already full of Disney scenes, so maybe this one they made, it's slightly more difficult to find and difficult to guess why these characters and objects are there in the first place. We know it wouldn't actually make sense considering baby Moana was on the island and this little baby looks about the same age, but it really does make you wonder what's up with the similarities. All this version of baby Moana is missing is Maui, a chicken, and her pig. And the Easter egg is complete. But is it real or is it just a simple character recycling? Will this be the alternate reality? Is this the reason we see Disney princesses all in the same room? The movie's all about breaking the internet, so who knows, maybe they'll bring us several different alternative realities we've never even considered before. Like Disney princesses having a total different role as babies. Baby Moana hasn't returned to the second trailer, so perhaps her role isn't as important as it might seem. What do you think? Do you have your own theory about Baby Moana in Wreck-It Ralph 2? Make sure to watch the trailer again and give us your opinion. Are we just imagining all of this? Or is it actually Baby Moana? How would that even be possible? Our heads are about to explode from all these questions, so make sure to come debate in the comments. We always love to hear your thoughts. Wreck-It Ralph 2 comes out November 2018, and you know we'll be watching and posting new Easter eggs and theories. Have you seen the Wreck-It Ralph 2 slumber party photo? We're totally here for Disney princesses in their casual outfits. Stay tuned to find out the most surprising meta moment of the slumber party scene. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to never miss another video. And be sure to check out our community section for even more fun. Now let's check out Disney princesses in casual outfits. I gave my mommy a cake, she turned into a big bear, my old didn't try to dare in. Mulan. Let's start with Mulan, who also is the only princess that opted out for a non-PJ look. You can't really blame her, Mulan always did things her way, and it's why she's one of our favorites. Even here, you can see her wearing something totally different from anyone else. The slumber party version of Mulan is rocking an absolutely styling bomber jacket, rolled up jeans, and red high tops. It might seem like a totally unusual sight, but don't forget, this isn't Mulan from the movie anymore. This is the new and improved version that's clearly keeping up with modern day fashion all the while still having her own style. We're totally here for it. Good job, Mulan. Anna. Love is an open door, right? Did you notice what Anna is wearing? Well, apart from the rolled up sleeve flannel, it's very easy to miss, especially since she's so far away. According to the internet, Anna's shirt actually has a picture of a sandwich with text that reads, finish each other's. But how cool is it that this tiny detail can actually be seen on her clothes? Of course, we love the flannel shirt too, and if you check Twitter, you'll find out some secret hints what these clothes represent. We love Twitter and their theories, Wait until you see what they thought of Elsa. Snow White. The internet pointed out that Snow White's outfit represents more than just some casual PJs. Her outfit actually has an apple with a skull. Yep, the same apple that actually almost ended her life. How powerful is that? She's totally owning her story. Of course, a lot of Disney princesses were in life-threatening situations, but Snow White's was one of the worst. You'd think she was scarred for life and wouldn't dare to even come close to another apple, but she's totally owning it in this casual outfit. Tiana. Sure, Tiana's hiding behind her Starbucks drink, but fans have pointed out another important detail. This is the first time we're actually seeing Tiana relax and having her hair down. Usually, she's always busy working, and this is one of the few times where we can just 
just see Tiana completely relaxed. And to be honest, we're totally okay with that. Also, her natural hair looks absolutely adorable. Although we're not sure Starbucks will actually help Tiana sleep, unless these Disney princesses are staying up all night. What do you think they're talking about? We'd love to know what's going on. But you have to admit, it's nice to see her with her hair down. Cinderella. Have you seen Cinderella's outfit? It's pretty awesome. We love the overall look. But what sets Cinderella apart is her modern take on her story. Her PJs actually has a pumpkin carriage. But pay attention to what's written on the carriage. It says G2G, which stands for Got to Go. How very Internet of Disney. Talk about being relatable and embracing what she went through as a kid. We can't imagine Cinderella using slang words or acronyms like that in real life. But who knows? Maybe this movie will show us a a totally different side of Disney princesses. Well, it kind of already did. We never saw any of this coming. Wait until you see what Twitter thinks about that look she's giving to Elsa. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? Rapunzel. Rapunzel's outfit isn't shown in full, but it's very interesting to see her in the same colors as her movie dress. You can't see it in a lot of detail, but she's wearing a cozy pink sweater. We've never seen Rapunzel in anything other than a dress, so this is quite a surprising move. But we do love that she actually stayed in pink. It's after all one of her most iconic colors. And we already know her long hair is back for this movie. Do you think all the other princesses had to help her move her hair out of the way? Sounds messy. Moana. Out of all Disney princesses, it looks like Moana is the one that's staying true to her movie outfit. Well, sort of. You obviously can't see her outfit, but you can see her orange tank top. The orange color definitely suits her, and we can't wait to see the outfit in full. Do you think she'll be wearing a skirt, jeans, or leggings? We're leaning towards some cozy, colorful leggings to match the top, but you never know what they'll do. Come on, Disney, hurry up. We want to see what Moana will look like. Elsa. And last but not least, there's Elsa. She definitely has one of the most meta outfits ever, and we're totally here for it. Do you see the text on her PJs? It says, just let it go, which is an obvious reference to her iconic song. It's hard to let go when that song just keeps popping back into our heads and just won't go away. But you have to be honest, this is the best outfit ever. Her drink looks perfect too, and we love the look she's giving to Cinderella. People on Twitter are already speculating that there's something going on between these two, and let's be honest, we'd love to see Disney make that happen. Wreck-It Ralph 2 comes in theaters on the 21st of November 2018. Will you be watching? You know we will, just so we can see how these casual outfits will look on other princesses. Speaking of, Merida, Belle, Aurora, and Jasmine weren't featured in the slumber party photo, but we're pretty sure they're still in the movie. We can't wait to see what they'll be wearing during the slumber party. Well, if they're actually in it, of course. And that's it for our video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.